Hello. Um, we are still learning the wonderful world of integrals. <clears throat> uh, so before I start, I don't know if from now on I'm going to start saying this every day or something. Uh, but anyway, um, the final half of the final is um, the part where I ask you about what you did in person orally. Right. Person nowadays means virtually. Um, and you got to schedule a time to do that. And I sent out a poll where you can pick a time. And if other people pick before you, times are gone. So go do that. Uh, if you want to find the link, it's in my, the last email I sent. Also, those emails, if you open Moodle, I'm going to the announcements. And, well, it's there with all the other announcements. Maybe other people here already did it. I don't know. Okay. So, um, where were we? I told you what an integral is. Um, so let me remind you what an integral is. If that's if, if that is a function, uh, define on a closed bounded interval. Then the area under the graph should be um, should be the sum uh, the limit of the areas of the rectangles that are close to the function. So. Um, this is something like this. So this is this is what the integral is. And we write it like this. Um, so this is um, what you get when you, no, let me start writing before. You uh, split A, B, the interval into n equal parts. Um, so you have a bunch of numbers in between. Um, and then let us call the step we take between each part, let us call it delta x, which is going to be equal to v minus a divided by n because I'm making them equal. Uh, so this, um, this means that I can draw a bunch of rectangles, maybe under, let's say, with the corner on the, with the left corner on the graph. And then I'm going to measure the area of the rectangles and sum it. So this is going to be the area of the first rectangle, which is the base times the height plus the area of the second, which is the base times the height, all the way to the area of the last rectangle, which, since I'm measuring from the left point, is going to be xn minus 1. Um, so this is the area of all the rectangles, and then you got to make the number of them go to infinity. And I could also write this sum using sigma notation, like so. Um,
<clears throat> so, I mean, people 400 years ago would have told you that the delta x is getting infinitely small, and that would make it into the dx, um, and the sum is turning into an an s, uh, and that's how the limit on the right becomes the integral. But I don't care for those reasonings. Um, they don't make a lot of sense. Okay. Um, so this is this is the integral. Also, um, this this is called the Riemann sum in honor of a German guy who presumably invented them. So it was German, um, and IE in German is pronounced E. Uh, so his name is Riemann, which is not going to stop you from saying Riemann, because for some reason, Americans never trust me with pronouncing foreign names. But you say whatever you want. Why am I telling you this? Just in case, just for when you see a problem that says compute the Riemann sum. So you know what this is. It's the, the sum uh, that when you take the limit, you get the integral. Uh, and the last thing I was saying yesterday is that um, on each interval, on each interval, um, um, that I divided the big interval into, um, I chose um, I chose to measure the height um, to be f of x i minus one. So if I have my interval here, that means that I made it so that the the rectangle hits the graph at the at the left corner, uh, but in reality, um, it shouldn't matter at all. For example. Um, I could choose the right point. So that would look, um, if only I could copy and paste. I can't. Oh. So if I choose the right, the right point, the rectangle looks like this. Uh, and it would give me a different area, but in the limit, it shouldn't. Um, the things in the limit, they shouldn't have, they shouldn't affect what I get in the limit. Um, so that well, this would give me hide um, f of x i, this is the right endpoint. Ugh. So here's the right endpoint, here's the left endpoint. Um, or even any, any, any point, which I'm going to call, I'm going to denote like this. In the interval, so x i um, x i star asterisk is just any choice of points in there. 
could be the right endpoint, could be the left endpoint, could be anything in between. So if you put it down here, then the rectangle is going to hit the graph at that point, and then I'm going to get some other rectangle. But the thing is, all these are very, very similar. Uh, especially if I make the if I make the base very, very small, I'm not allowing next i star to vary that much. Um, so. Um, If the area makes sense, um, well, what I should have is that all of these limits, uh, all all of these um, ways of computing the integral should give me the same same answer. So I could do. I could do what I wrote just before. I said I could choose f of x i, which would be the the right point in any in every interval. I could choose um, anything. So um, if I have my interval here, xi minus 1 and xi, so here I'm choosing the left, the left endpoint. Here I'm choosing the right endpoint. And here uh, I'm choosing just anything. So if, if this is going to make any sense, um, then all of these limits should exist and they, they should all be equal. Um, Um, you say f is integrable and we would say that the that limit is the value of the integral. So just like when the derivative made sense, we said the function was differentiable. I don't know why, don't, why we don't say derivative um, when it has an integral, when the integral makes sense, we say it's integral. Um, so soon enough, we'll see that continuous functions satisfy this. So we don't need to, the conclusion is that we don't need to care about this. It's just always going to work. And also, like I've been saying, you in practice, you don't have to compute Riemann sums. Uh, okay. Um, are there any questions? Are there any TikTok memes that I'll have to Google later and still not get? All right, so I'm gonna do another um, another example. Um, 
So here's an example. Or something else, uh, a completely different question that's not finding area, but it's going to have the same answer. Um, the, you measure the speed of a car. Um, at various moments. So you don't know the speed of a car, every, or say you do. Um, what, um, how can you estimate the distance traveled? So here's some measurements um, in feet. Hi. So, um, so I don't know the average speed at any, I don't know if I knew the average speed, that would, it would be very easy. Uh, if I knew the average speed was 30 feet per second, then the distance traveled is, is 30 seconds. It, what did I say? It is the velocity times the time. But I, I don't know it. I just know the instantaneous speed at a particular moment. I know what the speedometer is, is saying, which is not average speed. So, um, so what you do is you you guess the average speed. Um, so what is the average speed in the first five seconds of trip? Five, five, six, or you got five, six. Oh, wait, I, do I know? No. 28. I feel like I can get where 28, what? Where you get five six, or is it five or six? Twenty eight. So why twenty eight? <clears throat> Never mind. All right. I don't know if you if you got to convince otherwise, or if you just gave into the majority. I hope it's. I hope it's the first one because maybe maybe you're right. Wouldn't be the first time there's one person right in. So you did the average of the speed at zero and and five. So that's a good guess. The thing is, we have no way of knowing exactly what it is. Um, because we have no idea what the car is doing. Um, between zero and five seconds, maybe, you know, maybe the speed, maybe it's going exactly at 25 feet per second. And in the last 10th of a second, it just accelerates very fast. Or maybe it accelerates very fast at the beginning. So the speed is more like 31. Maybe it accelerates to 40 and then it accelerates at the in the last second, you know? So there's no way of knowing. 
but 28 is a decent guess and um honestly you're being if you say 28 you're more sophisticated than i um than i need to be i'm not i'm not even gonna i'm just gonna say um I'm just going to take 25. So um if I'm if I'm guessing if I'm guessing that the average speed is 25 feet per second, then um the distance traveled uh between zero to five seconds is the is the average speed uh times the the time uh that has passed which is five seconds so um 25 feet per second times five um whatever that is and then we can do this um We can do this for every five second interval. So the distance traveled is gonna be um, 25 times five. Uh, and then for the next, for the next uh, five second interval, I'm gonna guess just 31. Could guess thirty three. I uh, doesn't. I don't care. Um, and then for the next one, I'm gonna guess thirty five. For the next one, I'm gonna get forty three. Um, for the next one, I'm guessing forty seven. So. Um, so this is average speed between zero and five. This is the amount of time that has passed. This is what I'm guessing from five to 10. This is what I'm guessing from 10 to 15. This is what I'm guessing for 15 to 20, et cetera, up, up to what happens between 25 and 30. <clears throat> so this is how you would do it. Um, now, you would do it, well, I, I don't care, whatever it is. But my, my point is not, is not what the answer is, as, as usual, I tend to never care about the answers. My point is the way we did this, the way we did this, is we we did the exact same sum you would do um uh you would do to compute an integral so um this is what we did if the instantaneous speed is um f of t at time t then 
the approximation for the distance traveled that we just um, that we just did. Well, it's it's this. Um, it's um, the average speed um, guess um, for the first five seconds multiplied by five seconds. Uh, and then I would do the guess for the next five seconds multiplied by five seconds. Uh, and I would do that for all the intervals. So as the guess, what I'm taking is the instantaneous speed at t equals zero. And this I'm just gonna call delta t. This is the increment in time that I'm using, the increment at which I have uh, samples. Speed at t equals five times delta t. And then you keep going. And now if before I had a table, to tell me what the star t equals zero was 21, 28, 31, to 25, whatever. Uh, now, this is gonna be given by um, the, the function, this function f. Uh, if this is given by a function f, th then this is f of zero times del delta t, and then f of five times delta t, And then you can hopefully see how this looks like a, a Riemann sum. Um, and if I say zero, five, ten, these are some arbitrary points I've used to divide the the time interval into. If I call them x zero, x one, x two, this is f of x0 times delta t, f of x1 times delta t, and we keep going. And like with the area, if we made delta t smaller and smaller, you should expect to see the, the change in speed be smaller and smaller because maybe you can do a lot of wild things with your speed in five seconds. Maybe you can do less wild things in one second, maybe even less in 0.1 second. So the approximation should get better and better. Maybe I should take the limit as delta t goes to zero. And that would be exactly computing the integral. So the conclusion to draw from here is that this problem of finding the distance traveled from the speed um, has the same solution as the problem of finding the area under a graph. Um, All right, are there any questions? Okay. Um, so, um, maybe. Yeah, I'll do an example. So integrals are very hard to do this way. Um, Riemann.
So even some is the thing that, uh, I mean, it's the person. Uh, it's uh, it's the, it's those sums that we use to compute integrals. I bet there's a photo of the guy in the book. <clears throat> but what I mean by Riemann sum is just this kind of sum, where you take you take little intervals and you add the value of the function somewhere in the interval multiply by the the length of those little intervals. Let me just let me just write that down. Riemann sum divide an interval into small for each interval multiply the value of f by the length of the small interval and sum everything. This is what a Riemann sum is. Um, the value of f is going to be f of somewhere. And the length is going to be delta something. And when you sum, you get the sum of f of somewhere times delta x. This is a Riemann sum. Oof, I'm calling these axes instead of t's. I don't know why I'm doing this. Um, okay. <clears throat> So let me do an example next. Uh, I've already done one, but just to see what we're doing. And it's annoying, but it's just, I mean, it's a pain, but it's doable if you're patient. Um, let's, um, let's say, Okay, so I have a function and I'm just trying to do the Riemann sum. So uh, sine, remember, looks like this. This is zero and this is pi is the place where it hits zero again. So we're trying to, we're trying to estimate this area. Trying to estimate the yellow area. Um, and I'm going to do that by the way. I don't need to. I don't need. I don't need the picture to do this. I just need to stick it into the formula. Um, because I'm going to say a Riemann sum <clears throat> since I could choose the the points. And I'm going to do this by dividing into six pieces, and and then choosing a rectangle that fits. So maybe I'll choose the the one on the left hand side. Uh, 
and then I'm gonna measure the lengths of the rectangles, the, the areas of the rectangles. So what I need to do, so here it is, um, is divide the interval from zero to pi into, into six equal pieces. So how long are the pieces gonna be? So if I have zero here and pi here, and I divide into six, how far away from zero is this point? Pi over six, thank you. You divide pi into six pieces, you get pi over six. And this is, so this is just gonna be two pi over six, three pi over six, I could simplify this, but why bother? So that's the that's the first step. That's done, and then uh, let's see. Um, choose um, x one. So I have to choose a, a sample point in each of the of the intervals. And I mean, if the problem doesn't say anything, I guess I can choose whatever I want. Maybe the problem the problem might say, especially if you see it on web assign, where it wants you to get a one one answer, it will say use the left hand points, use the right hand points, use the midpoints. Um, but um, I guess I could choose wherever I want. Um, so let's um, maybe let's go with the midpoints. Since the midpoints should give me a better a better answer than the left or the right points. So the midpoint in here is pi over 12. So then I'm dividing into 12 pieces. So they're pi over 12, three pi over 12, five pi over 12, seven pi over 12, nine pi over 12. So these are what I'm calling x1 star, x2 star, x3 star, And now, uh, well, now I can just write down the sum. So, the Riemann sum is the sum from i equals one to six, because I'm dividing into six pieces of the value of the function at the sample point times the length of the interval. So this is the length of the small intervals. Um, 
and I could write down the sum. I could I could write it without sigma notation. Uh, that just means take i plug in one, plug in two, plug in three, up to six, and and sum them together. So. So this is the sum, this is all I'm trying to do. And now in the previous page, I said x1, x2, x6, this, these are pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12, 11 pi over 12. Um, Because this is pi over 12, 2 pi over 12, 3 pi over 12, 5 pi over 12. Um, each of these little intervals I have are a 12th of the big one. And these are the odd markings. So 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. And delta x is the the interval the 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 length of the small intervals. Which was pi over six. So I can just plug in all, all of these values. Um well and f is the sign. So the sum is going to be the sine at the first point times uh, the length, which is pi over 6, the sine at the second point, all six of them. Well, So that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. All it's, all it's left is to put it, this into a calculator. <sighs> Are there any questions? What I mean is ask me your questions. I know you have questions. So the point is, we have a formula for what a Riemann sum is supposed to be, and it includes plugging in f at a bunch of points and taking the length of a of an interval. And if you understand what each piece means, then all you, all you do is just follow the recipe, and in the end you end up with something that you will need a calculator for. Uh, okay, let's just put it into a calculator then. Um, Isn't that a long problem? I don't know what you mean by the long problem. Um, this, the the last sum I wrote, um, yeah, that's what I'm gonna plug in. So I'm gonna plug in sine of pi over twelve times pi over six. So that was the first thing, and then there were five other things that looked sort of similar. Two, three, four, five, six. Um, mm. Oh, there you go. So it was one pi, three pi, five pi, 
7 pi, 9 pi, 11 pi. Well, there you go, 2.02. Can I just screenshot this thing? What if I start sharing? Oh yeah, it works. Look at that. Uh, so there you go. That's the answer. Um, oh, that's actually no. That's actually a really good answer. Um, so the answer. Oh, plugged into the calculator. We got two point zero two three. Uh, so this is okay. So let me draw the area we were uh, we were going for. We we're going for zero sine of x. Um, so that's not it. The area between zero and sine of x. Oh, this is it. And and x is going to go between zero and pi. So this area. Good thing he already knows the answer. So you're gonna learn next week to do this in in, a, in two seconds to figure out that it's exactly two. Um, but we got pretty close. We got we got close to within one percent. Holy crap! Um, so what we just computed was split this uh, into six into, sorry, into um, into six equal pieces. And then at the midpoints of each interval, take, uh, take a rectangle of that height and measure the area and add it together. So the area of this rectangle is sine of pi over 12 times pi over 6. That's the height times the base. The next one is sine of 3 pi over 12 times pi over 6. And that's what you get for all six of them. And you get a really good approximation for this area. Come on. All right, great work. Okay, well, um, oof, this goes so slowly. Um, well, that's going to be it for today, I guess. Um, if you haven't done so, remember to sign up for the oral exam. Uh, and my office hours will be are today at 10. So I'll see you then.